Sometimes the admiration of a devoted group of followers can be a bit excessive. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cults in movies. For this list, we're only reviewing cults featured in cinema. Gotta get burned! While many of these groups only exist within their respective film's universe, a few are actually based on real life cults. Be forewarned, there are some major spoilers ahead, so spoiler alert. We are in the middle of a battle that's a trillion years in the making, and it's bigger than the both We're of us. We're making this shit up. Number 10, Secret Philosophical Society, Martyrs. Lucy's just a victim, like all of the others. Led by a woman known merely as Mademoiselle, this unnamed cult features a group of alleged philosophers that are trying to understand the afterlife by forcing people into becoming martyrs. Yet everyone's a victim. Martyrs are very rare. The Secretive Society selects young women as their potential martyrs and then kidnaps them. No one can try to tell me that the concept of martyrdom was strictly an invention of the religious. We tried everything, even with children. Through methodical torture, they hope their subjects will give them an understanding of the hereafter. Constantly unsuccessful, the group is convinced that they have not yet produced a proper martyr, and they have labeled all of their dead subjects as victims. That is, until they find Anna. You'll be all right. You won't have to protect yourself ever again. It's okay. Number nine, Eden Parish, The Sacrament. Here we are, welcome to Eden Parish. What do you think? It's great, right? Eden Parish is a dystopian community based on the real-life Jonestown cult, also known as the People's Temple Agricultural Project. Welcome to Eden Parish. Father wants only to create a community where peace and love are cherished. In this found footage film, the cult is established by a religious figure known simply as Father. Why are we chasing him? It was Father's orders. Father's followers are convinced that he saved them and obsessively venerate him. Father had a vision and he was of course right. And uh, we built heaven here on earth. Meanwhile, armed guards keep outsiders away and deter dissenters from leaving. Nobody can leave here alive. When an investigative news team comes to interview Father, they are covertly contacted by a group of dissidents that want to leave due to the systematic abuse they've suffered. Is it all right if I keep filming? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You can film whatever you like. A planned escape turns into a revolt, during which Father convinces most of his followers to drink a cyanide concoction, with armed guards executing those that refuse. Number eight, time travel cult, Sound of My Voice. Hello, Officer Randall. Yes, hello, I'd like to report a time traveler. A woman called Maggie claims to be from 2054 and leads the cult that's the focus of this psychological thriller. Maggie says that the future is already written and that her members are the chosen ones. Convincing her followers that the future is nothing but war and famine, she asserts she time traveled to prepare them for the forthcoming struggles. I'm from the future, I'm not a saint. <laughs> Members greet each other with a convoluted handshake. Two independent investigators, Peter and Lorna, gain access to the cult. I just feel like we're in over our heads with this whole thing, you know? It's like we started out wanting to make a documentary on cults. And now we're in one? Yeah, that's investigative journalism. Peter falls for Maggie, while the Justice Department taps Lorna for help. Lorna, you are in a unique position here. Things take a turn for the even stranger when Maggie convinces Peter to arrange a meeting with a girl named Abigail, who is supposedly Maggie's mother, and they perform the cult's special handshake. Number seven, Catskill Mountains cult. Martha Marcy May Marlene. Marcy! Marcy May! Where are you going? The mysterious Patrick leads this cult in New York's Catskills Mountains. Martha. You look like a Marcy May. This group supposedly exists to achieve self-sustainability through communal farming, but in reality, it's much more sinister than that. Protagonist Martha ventures into the Catskills and meets Patrick, who changes her name and eventually rapes her. It's a dream for the future. 
Water for the sand And the strangeness is wandering After singing Jackson Frank's Marcy song to followers, he refers to Martha as Marcy May. This is called Marcy's song. It's soon revealed that Patrick rapes female followers, has all his female children and the occasional outsider killed, and followers use the alias Marlene Lewis when talking to outsiders. Can I help you? Marlene Lewis. What's your last name, Jane? Number six, Freeburg Dance Academy, Suspiria. You have to tell me all about it. This dance academy in Freiburg, Germany is not a traditional arts institute. Peculiarly, many of its students are murdered, yet young aspiring dancers keep signing up to attend. We don't teach you how to dance here because we presume that our students already know how to do that. Instructors Madame Blank and Miss Tanner aren't just dance teachers. They're part of a larger coven, or group of witches, that serve under the watchful eye of the school's supposedly dead founder, Helena Marcos. Helena, give me power! But is she really dead? It's only near the film's end that protagonist Susie and audiences find out the truth about this ballet school. <laughs> Number five, the Islanders, the Wicker Man. I suspect murder and conspiracy to murder. The 1973 film takes place in the fictional Summer Isle, Scotland, where the Islanders have reverted to worshiping ancient Celtic gods to ensure a profitable harvest. Now, for the last time, where is Rowan Morrison? Due to a recent harvest failure, locals trick investigator Sergeant Howie into looking for a missing girl, only to sacrifice him during a May Day celebration to improve their next harvest. Mighty God of the Sun, bountiful goddess of our orchards, accept our sacrifice and make our blossoms fruit. In the poorly received 2006 remake, Gotta get burned! the location was moved to a mysterious island off Washington's coast. And while the only reference to the original is found in the community leader's name, Sister Summer's Isle, this pagan cult is terrifying and memorable either way. Not the beast! Ah! I'm my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! Number four, Children of the Corn, Children of the Corn. What kind of a god tells his children to kill their parents, huh? This agrarian youth cult secretly exists in the fictional town of Gatlin, Nebraska. What about Gatlin? Gatlin? <laughs> there ain't nothing in Gatlin. The young preacher, Isaac Croner, convinces the children of Gatlin that God has a violent personification known as he who walks behind the rose. The day he who walks behind the rose made himself known. Due to a poor corn harvest, Isaac then persuades the children to murder all of Gatlin's adults, as well as any subsequent adult that travels through the town, as a sacrifice to what isn't actually God, but Satan. We must sacrifice them both tonight. Through such violence, Isaac establishes a death cult that is only stoppable by burning the cornfields. Like a fire! Fire! He was gonna burn the field! Number three, the cause, the master. Freddy Quell. Freddy Quell? Elizabeth, my daughter. Uh. With some resemblances to L. Ron Hubbard's Scientology, the cause is a philosophical cult led by the intelligent and charismatic Lancaster Dodd. Say your name. Freddie Quill. Say it again. Freddie Quill. Say it again. Freddie Quill. Dodd initiates members through processing, a system of disconcerting psychosomatic personal inquiries. Do you often think about how inconsequential you are? Yes. Do you believe that God will save you? No. Have you ever had sex with a member of your family? Yes. Are you lying? No. Such questions are asked to force the examinee to overcome past sufferings, to move beyond the self, and to become one with the cause. Why don't you go back? I don't know! Why don't you go back? I don't back? know! Close your eyes. Told through the perspective of the increasingly jaded initiate Freddie Quell, the film also follows Dodd's steady rise to power, even in the face of internal and external criticism. And thankfully, we are, all of us, working at breakneck speeds and in unison towards capturing the mind's fatal flaws and correcting it back to its inherent state of perfect. Number two, Satanist cult, Rosemary's Baby. Unbeknownst to the new apartment tenants, Rosemary Woodhouse and her struggling actor husband, Guy, their elderly neighbors, Minnie and Roman Castavet, are Satanists. After Guy becomes friends with the Castavets, his career improves, and he convinces Rosemary to have a baby. We have to make a baby. 
One evening, Minnie secretly drugs Rosemary, who dreams, or at least thinks she dreams, that she's being raped by the devil while her husband, the Castabats, and the other neighbors watch. Eventually, Rosemary gives birth to the son of Satan and discovers the apartment building's tenants are the Castabets' disciples. And despite all of that, Rosemary appears to agree to raise her satanic son, albeit a bit reluctantly. What have you done to him, you maniac? Satan is his father, not guy. Before we get to our number one cults, I'm gonna get burned! Here are a few honorable mentions. <laughs> <laughs> Him up good, boy. Now you watch that gaze alive if it gets on you. It can turn you. Don't get it near his orifice now. Shut up! Number one, Thuggy Cult, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Thuggy is the archetype for the villainous movie cult. Based in Pancot, India, the Thuggy cult is centered on black magic and devoted to Kali, a heavily fictionized version of the Hindu goddess of destruction, change, and time. It's a Thuggy ceremony. They're worshiping Kali. The Thuggy have all the classic hallmarks of a horrific cult. They dabble in human trafficking and child slavery while also indulging in a little human sacrifice. Mukti Devi Kali Ma. Kali Ma. During the film's climax, Indiana Jones and company witness the cult's high priest, Mola Ram, ripping the heart out of a living man for sacrifice to Kali. So, all in all, this is one cult you want to stay on the right side of. agree with our list? What's your favorite cult from movies? For more excellent top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. I'm gonna get burned! I don't know!